Adam Sparrow with SP Wood Art and thank you very much for joining me here today. In this week's video I am going to turn a small dish, wooden dish, with some indexing and some coloring. Well, I attempted to and then the center of it got too thin and I had to do a design change in the middle of it. It's not the first time that this has happened to me and probably won't be the last. Um, so it eventually started out as a small dish and then turned into a ring holder. So I hope you stick around to the end and enjoy the show. I will start this project out by using a piece of curly maple. Then I'm going to use my center finder to locate the center and punch a hole. Then I'll use my compass to estimate how big the diameter will be. I've decided to attach the curly maple between the centers to start off. And here is a shot of me adding the square drive. Once I've mounted the piece to the lathe between centers, I'm using a square carbide tipped tool to rough out the blank to a round cylinder. I will also clean up both faces of the wood with the same square carbide tip tool. Now that the piece is round, I'm going to take a parting tool and make a small tenon on the left side so it can attach it to my four jaw scroll chuck later. I also realized that my parting tool was a little dull, so I had to go and give it a nice sharpen. Then for parting tools, I'll use some WD-40 with 2000 grit sandpaper just to knock off some of the burl on the edges from the 60 grit wheel that I just sharpened on. And then I'll smooth it out with a piece of leather. And here you can see that is much better. Next I'm going to use my one inch skew on its side to shape the profile of a dovetail to match my four jaw chuck jaws. Now I'm going to remove the piece of curly maple and attach it to my scroll chuck. But I have to change out the jaws to a smaller set, which literally probably only takes me about 15 seconds. Here I will use my round carbide cutter and start shaping the profile of the small dish. So my envision at this time is a small change dish that is slightly concaved on the top, rounded over on the edges with a concave on the underneath with a small footer. Safety tip, I am wearing my wedding ring again. You should never wear jewelry or anything loose or tie back long hair or anything that could possibly get caught on the spinning lathe. You'll notice that I switch my top hand position here as more of a guiding hand and a lighter touch. I also moved my right arm to a turned grip so it's easier to make a round profile and this will help to do lighter cuts and less aggressive cuts. This also made it so I didn't have to change my foot stance. Now I'm back to a more aggressive cut and as they say, hogging off a lot of material. Now I'm going to use my small micro tool, I believe this is a round nose scraper, to make a little tiny bead on the bottom as a footer. Next I'll use my round carbide cutter to make that cove on the underneath side. Then I'll do a little bit more roughing out on the inside of the dish. Here I'll use my bowl depth gauge. It's a really simple jig tool to make. It's just a dowel and a piece of flat wood. 
and I'm just checking to see how deep the inside of the dish is. I'll do some more roughing on the inside. I can go a little bit deeper. And I'd also like to mention that at this point, when I'm using the bowl depth gauge, that wasn't the issue that's going to come up later. Moving on, I'm going to use my half inch rounded over skew horizontally to clean up some of the little ripples from the carbide tool, some of the, the tool marks. Now on to sanding. I start with 100 grit and work my way up to 2000 on this piece because I'm going to do some coloring later and I really want to close the pores as much as possible. I'd also like to mention that sanding gets a bad rap but it is a very important part of turning. It's part of the finishing process and you should never rush the sanding or speed along and not finish the finishing as well as it should be finished. <laughs> It'll really have an impact on the final piece. And to finish the finishing, I'm going to use some 91% rubbing alcohol to clean up some of the dust and the resin from the sandpaper. And then I will sand it again really quickly, lightly with a 2000 grit, the last sandpaper that I used to knock down or knock off any raised grain from the alcohol. Now I'm going to switch gears and add my little pencil jig that I made and start indexing some lines and I'm going to draw all 24 indexing lines that my lathe has and this takes a little bit of time you don't want to rush it either and have crooked or vibrating lines. Now I'm going to use my calipers to basically pick a width that I want the lines the radial lines to be and this will make the width of the I guess pi squares later on so I'm kind of just picking one that's not too big or not too small just kind of uh, a middle road size so basically once I make the first line then I use the calipers to make the second line and then draw the third and so on and here's an indexing tip. I'm pressing in, you could probably notice, the end of the mechanical pencil to push out the lead to actually draw the radial lines. I didn't have to do this with the horizontal lines, but I do have to do it with the, the radial lines. And I do this because it's much easier to press in the pencil lead than it is to press in the entire banjo and jig. Now this is where things get a little interesting with the dish and pretty much the start of the design change. I used my 1 8 inch parting tool to try and part the piece off in the back and you may know where this is going I wasn't paying attention to the tenon width. Oh, fudge. Well, all is not lost. When life gives you lemons, you make some lemonade. So I'm going to take a utility knife here, or a box cutter, or a razor, or whatever you'd like to use, and just finish cutting the rest out. Now, the blowout in the center was a pretty small, uh, almost uh, a circle, so it was uh, not a bad break. So in light of this error, I'm going to do a design change and make a ring holder, which I have actually never made before. 
I'm sure you could do this several different ways, but this is the way that I chose to do. I'm going to pick a hole punch that's a little bit bigger than the hole that's in the center, which ended up being a 9 16 inch. Then I'll just try to center that over the hole the best I can possibly do. And one for good luck. Perfect. Now I picked up some other scrap pieces of wood, a piece of ash, and then a piece of regular hard maple, which I'm going to rough down to a cylinder, well, mostly, and I really want to make a 9 16 inch tenon on one of the ends. And I'll just use this 9 16 inch wrench to keep checking the tenon width. And I'm going to use my square nosed scraper to ensure that the tenon is parallel. Next, I'll try the tenon and make sure that it fits very tightly in the hole because you don't want any gaps. And it fit perfectly. Now that I know that the diameter of the tenon is the correct diameter for the hole, I'm just going to take my one inch skew here and round over the lip so it fits snug in the concave of the dish. Now to quickly hold it in place while I turn, I'm going to use a medium CA glue with some accelerator. And I'm using the medium instead of a thin because I don't want the thin to run out the front and run all over the place and get all over my indexing lines. You also want to ensure that the piece you're going to use for the bottom is flat. Now I'm going to drill a 9 16 inch hole and I am using my laser pointer and here is the glasses that I use so you can see the laser better. It's pretty cool on camera actually. Now you just want to make sure that the hole is the same depth or a little bit more than the tenon that you had made for the top post. Now I'm going to clean up some of the glue marks and make sure the bottom is flat. Next I'm going to glue the top into the bottom and I'm going to do that by using some Ultimate Type Bond wood glue. And I'll just wipe it around using a blue paper towel and I'll also put some glue on the tenon. Then I'm going to align the grain as best as I can and push the two together really hard. Pad the top recess with some paper towels to fill it and prevent scratching and clamp it together. Then with a small piece of paper towel, I'll just clean up any of the excess glue that squeezed out of the seams. And to ensure that you have a good glue joint, you want the glue to seep out of the seams. After 24 hours or more of drying, then I'll come back and undo the clamps and continue turning. The glue joints came out great and the piece itself is pretty straight. And once again, I have to mark the center on this end, not the other end, and mark the center with a hole punch. You can see here that it is off center once I attach it to the lathe, but only a little bit. I'll fix this by using my skew chisel as a scraper. This will also clean up the glue joint. And then I'm gonna use my parting tool and leave myself ample room this time. <laughs> Next, I will switch back to a half inch skew chisel and make a small bead for the ring holder footer. 
Also, I'll use my micro tool, round nose scraper, to get into those detailed spots to obtain a really crisp edge. Now I'll move over to the post and I'm using a detailed spindle gouge, a 3 8 I believe, and I'm just going to finish shaping the profile. And so that there is less cleanup after I part the ring holder from the lathe, I'm going to remove some material from the top of the post and shape the top of the post a little bit round and then I will actually part the ring holder off from the base. And since this is a pretty tight spot, uh, make sure that you do a relief cut to the right. Next, I will turn down my lathe speed to approximately about 500 and start the sanding process once again. But I'm not going to sand the actual uh, dish part because I want to still leave some of the indexing lines on there for some coloring. And another safety tip, you should remove your tool rest from the banjo. That way if inadvertently the sandpaper or something got caught, your arm or hand wouldn't get jammed into the tool rest. Another tip, if you're going to reuse some old sandpaper that was from a different project, like this one had some red dye on it, use some new sandpaper because that red will transfer to this light colored wood. And here is where I actually will part the ring holder off from the lathe. This project is being difficult. So, as you can see, there's a little hole where the tenon is in the base. So I'm going to fill that with some medium CA glue and mix in some of the sawdust that was made. And I'm just gonna crumple that up into little fine pieces and use a paper towel to really jam it in the crack. And I'm using a medium CA viscosity rather than the thin because I didn't want the thin to run all over the place or even run through and out the other side. Next I'm going to sand the bottom of the ring holder using my random orbital sander and I'm going to start with a 100 grit, no I'm sorry it was an 80 grit and then I'm going to go up to uh, 220 and then I'll sand from 320 to 2000 by hand. So I've decided to put a little bit color on this ring holder and even though some of the indexing lines have been sanded away I still have enough here where I could put some color on here and I have an idea of what I'm going to do. And it actually came out quite nice. And I'm going to use a blue. This is a Fiber Castell Artisan Pen with uh, Indian ink in it. And it's Indanthrene Blue, number 247. And I'm also going to use an Indian Red 192. just use a pencil eraser and erase the pencil lines that I didn't use. To finish I'm going to use this folk art acrylic crystal clear coat and I'm going to apply three coats of this finish to the top and the bottom. Oh and this will take about a day and it is a matte finish with a slight sheen to it. I strongly believe you can salvage any project, avoid any potentially costly mistakes, <laughs> and uh, do as I do and uh, save every little inch of wood that you can. Well, 
I try to anyway. <laughs> so I'm quite happy how this design change came out and I hope that you and my subscribers found some helpful tips and some ideas that may help you in your shop. So thank you very much and I hope you're still watching and here are the final photos.